Hey yo, what is going on, viewers of the tube? I'd like to first introduce myself as Tyler, the host of the channel that can figure out a crypto project's dirty laundry as good as Anthony Anderson figuring out the truth about Stevie Wonder. I'm on stage with Chris Tucker and Johnny Gill. Chris Tucker and I are Johnny Gill's background dancers. Stevie walks on stage, walks to me, looks me dead in my eye and says, Anthony, get me to a piano. I was like, Stevie, well hell, if you just walked to me, you could have walked to the piano. <laughs> He caught himself. He caught himself and had to play it off. And so I took him to the piano and he played. What? Stevie ain't blind? No, no, he's not. You know our gimmick. It's time for Chico Crypto. A gimmick, a fugazi, a hustle and bustle. That is what we need to dive into today as the American public is being played for a fool with a large majority of the public supporting it and those who oppose it have their hands tied behind their back with nothing they can do. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the $2 trillion stimulus, which if you watched my video yesterday, you understand in actuality, it's a $6 trillion stimulus. Of that $6 trillion, 66.6% .6 goes to the banks. 8.3% goes to the corporations. 5.8% goes to the medium to small sized businesses. 4.2% to the citizens directly. 4.2% to unemployment insurance. 2.5% to state and local governments. And the ones that need it the most, the hospitals, they just get about 2.2% of the total six trillion. This stimulus package is the nail in the coffin that is everything that is wrong with this country. It's wrapped up into an 857 page document. Shoot the purpose of the bill from the bill, providing emergency assistance and healthcare response for individuals, families, and businesses affected by the 2020 coronavirus pandemic. Well, according to where the money is going, this bill's purpose should read like this, providing not needed assistance to corporations while providing barely any assistance to families and individuals. This is a stimulus bill for corporations, my friends, which is only going to widen the income gap even further and at an increasingly rapid pace. This direct cash stimulus is going to cost about $18,000 per US tax paying citizen. So what the government is doing right now is taking $18,000 of your future money, giving corporations $16,800 of that, and then hoping you're satisfied with a $1,200 check. And that is from your tax money anyway. Our government is robbing us so blind in front of our faces that even Stevie Wonder could see it. But the fact of the matter is many people can't see it. I know I will have some people argue that these bailouts are a good thing so the corporations they don't have to do those mass layoffs and set the economy back for many many more years resulting in increased unemployment and less revenue for social services. All I gotta say about that is, der her, you think these large corporations employ America anymore? No, they do not. They have been outsourcing their work to other parts of the globe and will continue into the future. This infographic tells it like it is regarding manufacturing in the United States. Since 2010, over 50,000 manufacturing facilities have left the USA, which means six millions of those jobs are gone. And this was all while the largest non-financial US corporation sat on $1 trillion worth of cash and not using it to create jobs here in America. And if the job needs to be in America, corporations are finding sneaky ways to hire foreigners and pay them less, like through the H-1B visa program, of which many Fortune 500 companies have been taking full advantage of for the past decade. So if you think they're going to invest in America when they haven't been for the last decade, you have to be kidding yourself. So let's stop kidding around and let's dive into what the corporations are getting because in actuality, it's just an accounting gimmick. I took the glass. In the stimulus bill, page 513, it says, not more than the sum of $454 billion in any amounts available under paragraphs one, two, and three that are not used under those paragraphs shall be available to make loans and loan guarantees to and other investments in programs or facilities established by the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System for the purpose of providing liquidity to the financial system that supports lending to eligible businesses, states, or municipalities by A, purchasing obligations or other interests directly from issuers, 
B. Purchasing obligations or other interest in the secondary market. And C. Making loans, including loans or other advances secured by collateral. So those are the details of the bill, but now we need to hear what White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow had to say about the stimulus package. I just want to walk through a couple of key points. This legislation is urgently needed to bolster the economy, provide cash injections and liquidity and stabilize financial markets to get us through a difficult period, a difficult and challenging period in the economy uh, facing us right now, but also to position us for what I think can be an economic rebound later this year. We started the year very strong and then we got hit by the uh, coronavirus in ways that probably nobody imagined possible. We're dealing with that as best we can. This package will be the single largest Main Street assistance program in the history of the United States. The single largest Main Street assistance program in the history of the United States. Yep, the single largest bailout in Main Street, aka Wall Street history. He is freaking admitting it live. Let's continue. And finally, I want to mention the Treasury's Exchange Stabilization Refund. That will be replenished. It's important because that fund opens the door for Federal Reserve firepower to deal a broad-based way throughout the economy for distressed industries, for small businesses, for financial turbulence. You've already seen the Fed take action. They intend to take more action. And in order to get this, we have to replenish the Treasury's emergency fund. It's very, very important. Not everybody understands that. That fund, by the way, will be overseen by an oversight board and an inspector general. It will be completely transparent. So the total package here comes to roughly $6 trillion, $2 trillion uh, direct assistance, roughly $4 trillion in Federal Reserve lending power. Again, it will be the largest Main Street financial package in the history of the United States. Yeah, here's where things get interesting. He admits it's a $6 trillion package in actuality. Highlights again the largest Main Street bailout, and he specifically brings up the replenishment of the Treasury Exchange Stabilization Fund. So the average person is going to have no idea what Larry is talking about, but we here at Chico are not average. This is exactly what is going on. The first thing to understand is that we are the only democracy in the world that has turned the actual creation of unlimited amounts of our money over to a private entity owned by the mega Wall Street banks. We're talking about the New York Fed. And now that Fed is in cahoots with the US Treasury, led by Steve Mnuchin's Snoochie Boochie. <laughs> Snoochie is going to take 500 billion of taxpayers' money and dump that money into their exchange stabilization fund, hand it over to the Federal Reserve and get $4 trillion and bail out via the Fed. So how is the Fed funding this? By selling government-backed treasuries, 10-year, 20-year, and 30-year. But then guess who pays interest on those treasuries? The taxpayer does over the time period. And this means things get really sticky-icky soon. But before that muck, it's time for a sponsored segment of this video, being supported by Veracity. And like always, the full details of our agreement can be found in the description. So Veracity, what are they all about? Well, the project is focused on attention and tokenizing that time spent on video platforms, entertainment platforms, and gaming platforms. Basically, Veracity has built the infrastructure for publishers to serve attention-rewarded video and gaming content to the billions of people who inhabit the internet. So what does that consist of right now? Well, just two days ago, Veracity showed the world with the launch of Veracity.tv, the destination portal for access to all Veracity products. The first thing we need to check out is the watch and earn, as you can earn VRA tokens for watching videos. As of right now, they have close to 500 rewarded videos, and clicking into one, you sign up to be rewarded by the trophy icon in the top right of the video player. Click it, short sign up and confirmation, and you're ready to be rewarded. Once you finish a video, the trophy icon lights up to let you know you have a reward. And as we can see, we just earned some VRA tokens for our time watching that video. 
Now you are not limited to Verocity.tv to earn these rewards for watching videos. These videos are on outside sites too of the publishers, like some of the early ones, technews.guru, healthstyle.org, and seriouslynom.org. And this is possible because they have built the SDKs for some of the world's most popular video players, including YouTube, Vimeo, Twitch, and more. So it's highly possible this video on YouTube could have that trophy widget in the near future. But video is just one piece of the attention rewards they're going after. Remember I said video games? Well, phase one has launched with the release of their own game store. So in January of this year, they announced the launch for quarter one and the partnership with over 550 game publishers and integrating Verocity tokens into the publisher's games. Well, those publishers are live and right now you can play hundreds of their casual games, play as a single player, try a player versus placing game, or even create your own tournaments and challenge your friends worldwide with Ferocity tokens as a base. And with phase two of the game store, you will earn and win VRA from playing and winning tournaments and other gaming related activities. And all of this gets wrapped into their fully live Vera wallet, where right now you're able to stake, buy more with the Fiat Gateway, and even spend some of of that through their retail partners. So is this just the beginning for Verocity? The real question is, did I just grab your attention? Now back to the craziness they call Finance 1.0, the Fed, the stock market, and more. So us citizens, the taxpayers, aka the debt slaves, are going to be footing this bill. And it is through collusion of the Trump administration, bipartisan Congress, a treasury led by Mnuchin and the New York Fed, by the creation of new SPVs or special purpose vehicles. So how did we get SPVs and what are they? Well, the Fed before the first financial crisis, 2008, only had the power through law to bail out through the purchase of assets directly. This was limited to treasury securities, agency debt, and residential mortgage-backed securities, MSBs, through Ginnie Mae, a US government agency, and the GSEs, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Although on March 23rd, the Fed changed this and added commercial mortgage back securities to that list. But back to 2008, the Fed, they needed to make other big changes. They needed to buy assets like corporate debt. So the Fed created the Commercial Paper Funding Facility, one of their first SPVs. And it was a program first introduced during that financial crisis to maintain the flow of short-term debt that companies frequently use to fund everyday expenses such as rent and payroll. So this Commercial Paper Funding Facility, it was revived on the 23rd and it's an SPV and it was created so the Fed can purchase assets they are not allowed to and then they can lend to corporations of which they're not allowed to. It's a loophole. Bull crap is what it is. And guess what? Under the Federal Reserve Act, these SPVs require taxpayer backing from the Treasury Department to protect the Fed from losses. Fed SPVs are nasty things, and all they do is fatten the issuer's pockets by transferring most of the losses of the junk collateral loans onto the investors. Junk collateral? Yes, we need to get into the last new rule put out on March 23rd. Now the Fed can lend to its 24 primary dealers, which includes great names like Bank of America, BNB Paribas, Barclays, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and more. And now they lend against collateral, and that collateral can be anything the Fed decides, including now stocks, and in the end, maybe old rusty bicycles in the boomers' garages. Junk, junk, junk. But we need to get into the newly created SPVs announced on that same fateful day, March 23rd. From their announcement, establishment of two facilities to support credit to large employers, the primary market corporate credit facility for a new bond and loan issuance, and the secondary market corporate credit facility to provide liquidity for outstanding corporate bonds. These are the scary ones. And to understand what the Treasury and Fed now have in mind, you have to know what the Fed did the last time around. In order to bail out the giant investment bank Bear Stearns and the giant insurer AIG, the New York Fed set up more opaque SPVs in 2008 called Maiden Lane 1, Maiden Lane 2, and Maiden Lane 3, as seen from their financials in 2012. This is a wild mess, but this is what happened back then. Maiden Lane 1 purchased approximately 30 billion of Bear Stearns toxic mortgage related assets. Maiden Lane 2 purchased billions of dollars of residential mortgage backed securities from 
the lending portfolio of AIG subsidiaries. Maiden Lane 3 purchased collateralized debt obligations on which AIG Financial Products had written credit default swaps. All three of these programs were actually bailouts of Wall Street's mega banks. Over 93 billion of that money that went in the front door of AIG ended up going out AIG's back door to pay off the Wall Street banks that would have had to report tens of billions of dollars in losses had the Fed not paid 100 cents on the dollar for AIG's debts to the banks. And now it's happening today, but on a different scale. With the creation of these corporate bailout on steroid SPVs, the Treasury has already committed to becoming a 10% equity holder in these things created by the Fed. If this legislation passes as drafted, which it looks like it will, U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin will gain enormous powers. Is he someone who the American people can trust? You know how we end it. Oh, hell no. Cheers. I'll see you next time.